For jobs with thousands of pieces, building a dedicated fixture can make good financial sense. There are techniques and tricks to make this process relatively easy. We're going to outline the steps we took to make a fixture for this part here. We also made a step-by-step -step video that goes into a lot more detail about each step in the process of creating this multi-part fixture. So be sure to check that out. Here we'll be focusing on the UMC 750P. This machine is mostly known for its ability to port cylinder heads, but that's only one of the many possible applications for this machine. The 210 millimeter diameter rotary on the table provides a unique opportunity to use a variety of fixtures and can be very efficient when doing production work. My part has features on the top and two sides, so I'm going to make a rotary fixture so I can machine all of these features in the first operation. The UMC 750P comes with an HRT 210 rotary and an A-frame support, so I chose the Haas 20-inch tooling block to make my fixture. The tooling block is 4.5 inches, or 114 millimeters square, and has precision bosses on each end. One end fits the adapter plate, and the boss on the other end is a perfect slip fit into the A-frame support. The beauty of this is that next time I need to run these parts, I can take this whole setup and put it in a VF2 with an HRC210, or for that matter, any other Haas mill large enough to hold it. I don't have to change my program or anything. I know I needed low profile clamping, so I chose Mighty Bite talon grips and pit bull clamps as my clamping mechanism. Programming for the tooling was very simple. It just requires two small pockets and a threaded hole in each pocket. I included a reamed hole for a dowel pin to locate my parts. I programmed one part in my cam system and made three simple edits to incorporate dynamic work offsets, which I'll cover in more detail in our step-by-step -step video about this process. I loaded up one part, proofed my program, and optimized my code and got my cycle time down to 4 minutes and 24 seconds. Next. I manually edited each tool operation into its own subroutine by simply adding a unique end number at the start of the tool and an M99 at the end of each tool. We'll use a different work offset for each part and then use an M97 local subprogram call to repeat the subroutines. I run the first tool operation subroutine 28 times once on each work offset and then come back to the first work offset for the second tool operation subroutine and repeat it 28 times, and so on. Be sure to check out Mark Terryberry's Tip of the Day video where he shows you the ins and outs of using M97. The final programming step is to add the M30 to the end of the program. Just below this M30 is where all the tool operation subroutines go. Now, I've glossed over a lot of details, but all told, the programming time to go from one part to 28 parts took me less than 15 minutes. It's well worth the extra programming time on a high volume part like this. Now that my program is set, it's time to load up my 28 blocks and use the probe to set the X, Y, and Z axis work offsets for each location. Once I've set all the work offsets, it's time to run the program through. Because I eliminated all those repeated tool changes, my per part cycle time went from 4 minutes 24 seconds down to 3 minutes 22 seconds. That's a 23.5% reduction in cycle time, but more importantly, I save over 1 minute for every part I run. That's 16 hours and 40 minutes on a 1,000 part run. Multiply that by your shop rate and you'll see that's real money. Now, there are costs associated with programming and cutting the fixture, so you'll need to analyze your situation, but multi-part fixtures with M97 subprogram calls can definitely save you time and money. For a lot more details on this process, be sure to watch our step-by-step -step version of this video. And thanks for watching.